do. So we'll go through some various statistics from the last year and um, I'll run through them with you all if you want to kick that. So here we go. So health checks and plans. So as you can see in quarter one to quarter four, you see there's quite a massive upsurge from quarter three to quarter four and I believe at the end of quarter four it was around 250 health checks done borough-wide. Um, borough um, so it's good that we're obviously getting on but unfortunately um, if you want to click it again it's only 33 percent um, and this can go this needs to go up and as you see it was 49,000 pounds missed really and not going back into the practices and obviously that that's not what we want if you want to go to the next side so here we go his audit sees slash audits in the last three years so this is um, patients with audit sees um, who haven't had audit sees in uh, last year so as you can see it's very varied most um, most um, networks are on the rise except from network one and network three so if we just keep on pushing these audit sees um, that'll be fantastic so here we go OST monthly patients excuse the penguin surfer but um, it's quite chaotic as you can see um, from quarter one I'll, I'll take network um, eight as an example which is on the top so as you can see it starts from network one at the um, bottom and then goes through networks. Um, you can see in quarter one, at the beginning of quarter one, network eight had 24 and then all the way to quarter four, uh, at the end of March um, 13. And um, that just shows you how much these patients are, are very inconsistent and, and they move around. Um, um, you can see in network two, it started at four and then in, in quarter four, it ended up at 19. So there you go. It's just to the next one just so, so I can um, clarify um, to come up on here um, there are three requirements for payments um, or three factors and that's obviously the script the coding so the drug therapy code which is used um, when you open um, the substance misuse template it's, it's automatic and also they have to be on their NDTMS list this list is sent by myself to practices every month um, and admin should be um, recording this on to EMIS. Um, I believe this has been, this has been being done borough wide, but if there are any mishaps or you think this is not being done, contact me and I can go through on, and, on how to update it and, and, um, and all that. So the real um, that leads us nicely on to OST quality. So this is, again, all those three factors. So OST, coding <coughs> and NDTMS. Um, the BIU who sends recall lists to wall practices for calling in these patients that are eligible for a health check. Um, also include in one of the tabs OST, um, and this basically tells you um, if, for example, here, as you can see, this is quarter one. Um, it should be a straight line. The fact oh, that sorry, mate. That's all right. Go. That's fine. You've lost it yeah. The fact that it's going down means there's obviously more who are just getting a prescription and less who are having the, the, the free statistics, so not everyone is getting paid for. Um, but in quarter four, you can see that has, it's gradually increasing, so that, that's great news, but there's still a very slight gap. Um, so again, BIU send these lists monthly to practices, so just make sure you check on the OST tab, that, and they specifically say code drug therapy for this month, for, um, and it's incredibly useful, so I would just say, make sure to keep an eye on it. Okay. So I was going to talk through some developments. Um, so we're, first of all, I should say we're, we're a, basically a year and a half into this program. We've got until next March as our final year. Um, there will be a re-procurement of this contract quite soon. So we're really keen to get as many of these things in place. So we've been talking about the really horrible, cynical, get the targets. But obviously, this is about vulnerable patients. And it's brilliant, I should say, the, the way that practices have engaged in this program. And it says a lot about Tar Hamlets that we're doing that. So some developments. Um, congratulations to East One uh, Health, who've started to do OST work now. Um, we had um, seven practices who, who weren't doing that at the beginning of the program. So healthy, um, uh, East One Health, congratulations to Raquel and the team. Where are you? Yes, I know you. Yeah, 
Oh, and Debbie as well. Great. Okay. Um, so well done, because that is a big leap. That is a big leap uh, to 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 get, giving patients uh, the service. So that's brilliant. Um, we're working with Reset really closely. We rely on Reset to be sending us really clean data from their NS, um, NDTMS records and there have been a load of glitches. We've done more Datex than a dating site um, <laughs> uh, because we think sometimes if we are sent information about patients that never existed or were in Hackney or whatever and these were the early glitches that is a, a data uh, protection issue and so we you know we've raised a lot of this. We are content that things are getting better and so that's really great and it's a, a testament to our relationship with Reset. So they're coming much much more regularly now and they're clean, it's cleaner data and it is our patients which is great. Our next development um, is about our OST protocol which you've now all got uh, and this is really and this is the work of Anna and Nicola and the clinical team to really sort of pin down uh, the relationship that you should have with your patients and the protocols around how you deliver that service. And then when you get new um, practices joining us on the OST journey, uh, it's a bit easier because there's a, a really clear protocol. So brilliant for these guys to have straightened that out. And Tariq as well, I know, yeah, don't worry. Um, <laughs> um, so moving on, um, alcohol hubs and OST hubs are in place. And this is our latest map. Um, of where we are doing these hubs together because we think that if you have got somebody like Chris in your practice then getting people to sign up on NDTMS that you might have referred or getting people to uh, take some action around uh, a, a sort of low-level alcohol issue or whatever if there are people in your practice or at least in your network uh, that you can refer it into then the relationship is really really strong and that's really important. So we see that where we have a reset coordinator in place our, our results are much better and so we've been demanding and pushing to make sure that we get an even um, distribution of um, coordinators helping with OST and also we are aiming to try and get a, uh, an alcohol clinic in each of the networks a, as a starting point. So at least you can, you can refer to somebody up the road if, even if it's not in your practice and that will particularly help the smaller practices we think. Can I have one point of course, yeah, yeah. To what we mentioned this morning. Having people spread out in the community who work for Reset that work jointly with us in primary care also provides a bridging point for those clients or patients who are rather uneasy about going in centrally. Now we have a definite model in the district, reset treatment service is the single point of entry. And people have to be engaged through that to have access to the services. But it doesn't mean to say they have to go up to Mile End all the time. And although ideally they go up to Mile End initially for many of the services, they won't have to, for example, for the alcohol um, lower level intervention services. And so the more you're aware of who the local care coordinators are and so yeah. for difficult people, the more you can liaise with Reset and get people to enter Reset but on a slightly more local geographical basis if that's someone who's resistant to engagement. Of course there's an advantage of their going centrally because they have access to more facilities at the beginning. Okay, so, yeah, really important. So, um, here's a really exciting development. We've recruited now some new clinical lead roles and it, um, it's one for each of the localities and also a, a, a more centrally working um, uh, pre-reset nurse specialist lead as well. So it's really great to welcome uh, Raquel who is working in network three and four and Ariba who's working in network one and two and uh, Amit who's working in five and six. Kirsten was here this morning, uh, she's probably might pop back a bit later I'm sure, but Kirsten Shark is um, the network seven and eight clinical lead. These are going to be people who are there to help you. 
If you aren't doing OST, they'll be there to support you, particularly Narenza, who is the specialist nurse, because a lot of these functions are being done by nurses and HCAs and, and, and giving somebody like uh, uh, Narenza, who it, it works uh, at the Homeless Project and works with uh, Reset at the moment, for her to come in and give some of that confidence building with your staff teams, really important. For the GPs who are now clinical leads in the area, um, they will be your liaison. They will be somebody who you can go to to, to help support your delivery uh, if you need that. So we're trying to take a bit of burden off um, Anna slightly, um, but we're and 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 get some expertise in the area. So they're there. Some of the flowers are blooming. The birds are getting greater. Even more <laughs> I'm sure that's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, indeed. <laughs> so, um, are you blooming? Great. Um, so we're 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 just uh, we're really keen that that role develops, and these are people to help you. So, congratulations on their appointment, and we've got a year to try and sort of bed that work in, which is great. Really lucky that we've got this program, that the DAT have given us this program to run, and that relative to the to the austerity cuts that the local authority have had to undertake, we are pretty well funded, okay. We are funded through the care, the care group of, of uh, running this contract, but we, we need to share that out onto the practices. So we have come up with a, um, a, a program of um, uh, uh, bonus payments for this year just gone by. And really what we want to do is make sure that we share the, the money out. It can't sit in a care group account somewhere and transfer forward all the time. We have to spend this money and we think that the work that's been done actually warrants this money as well. So for those of you who have completed a health check and got a care plan in place for a patient, we are proposing, and we're not quite ticked off on this, but we're proposing we pay an extra £50 per patient for last year, so that's quite generous, I think. The OST, since the start of the service, we'd like to pay an extra £15 for each month of a patient that you have worked with, so again, uh, good, good, you know, we're trying to reward that in some way. Um, Patients audit C, we want to pay 50p for every patient that you've uh, done an, uh, uh, an audit C within the quarter. And patients audit uh, C5 five, five and over with the full audits, we'd like to pay a pound extra as well. So there's some dividends coming out to people for the work that they've done. And that's sort of, I think, quite... Uh, I think is a positive thing that we, we're saying. Now next year, you've got to bear with us because we might not be able to reward as much. Indeed, we're already, if you could pull up the next thing, what we thought we would do right from the beginning of this year, instead of giving you £35 per patient per month, we would move that to £40 because that's something that, um, was it £32 when we took over or 31 or something? We moved it up to 35 We think we should pay £40 for... Exactly. So, so rather than waiting for the performance at the end of it, let's pay you up front and get that going. So we're going to be paying um, £40 rather than £35. And in addition, we'll be adding a new payment of £3 for every patient um, with an audit, um, alcohol with an alcohol um, uh, over 20 who gets referred to reset. So the DAT are really keen that we make sure that when we get a patient who has a high um, audit score, that we refer them on. A lot of moral maze issues there about whether you refer people who don't want to be referred. Um, you know, we, we've had this over the years, haven't we, with referral to rehab and pulmonary and things, you know, whether you refer willy-nilly or whether you actually wait for consent. And I, th I think that's something you're all used to. I wanted to just um, mention, so, so all those targets we've worked out and set you guys to do, and well done, because we're moving things on brilliantly. At the same time, I think it's next Tuesday, we're meeting with the DAT because we've got our monitoring. And our monitoring's slightly different because these are the criteria that they've asked us to monitor around. 
Um, and you might not be able to read them specifically, but um, we've wrapped up quite a lot of these targets into the health check and to the health planning process so that it sort of makes it an easier block for you to, to, to get together, really, basically. And likewise with the alcohol ones. Um, there's a few there that the data are very concerned about, one of which is the referral to reset. They can't understand that if a doctor sees somebody of 20 and over uh, on, on the units, uh, they're going to, um, then why they wouldn't refer. And we're saying, look, we're in, there's all these issues around people actually accessing that and going along to that. So we're, we're aware of that and we're, we're trying to change some of the criteria for that. Um, the other thing is number two there, percentage of patients prescribed 100 mil of methadone or above and receiving annual C C ECG for patients. We, we've, this was a target that was set that we cannot monitor um, and we might need to go to practice leads to help us get that monitoring done as part of your role. You know that we as a, as a team, uh, we as a service are paying out um, a, 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 some money to the practices to provide a clinical lead for practices. And this is one of the duties we, might, we will need you to do because you might need a sort of manual search in order to get that. Is that right, yeah. Nicola? Yeah, you, need to, you, need you will be. Because you can't, it depends on if you're doing it weekly or two weeks or the total amount of script that you're doing. So it's te uh, te checking on the volume, really. But yes, so I'll be sending out an email to all, all the practices explaining what you need to do and instructions. Yeah. And you'll be happy, we've investigated it in depth with CEG, and there isn't a reliable search for the high dose opiate people except by hand. But it's not many people. The numbers will be very small, and all it will be is picking through on the, who comes up on the search and just seeing if they really did have more than 100 mil. It will probably be two or three people brought up on the search a maximum, which we need to just check. Through. Yeah, so we just need to report on that, and th that should be fine. Um, otherwise, we've got a lot of yellows, a few greens, and next year. We set this up on a baseline, we've established that baseline, and we've, for, for this current year that we're now in, is a 5% increase. Well, if, if you're looking at the eligible patients for annual health check and individual health plan, um, at 33%, we're already over the target that we set ourselves. But we've got to be aware that this year they will be recommissioning. They will want to get value for money. And so we really want to make sure that we, we push this figure on, et cetera. Um, I know it's a bit of an all, all or nothing. You've got to click all the criteria, all seven elements of a health check, and then bring it together in a health plan. But we think for the finance that we offer for that and some of the reward that we offer for that, it's good medicine. And we just think that if you can find a way of doing that, it will be really good. And remember it's annual, not one-off. Mm -hmm. so you yes, have to get nice. going all over again. Yeah, yeah. And in answer to your question about how people are doing it, I know some GPs, particularly with their um, uh, opiate substitute patients, are sort of, you know, before they do the script, they're saying, well, I'm going to do two elements with you. I'm going to do your blood pressure this week, and I'm going to do that in a few weeks' time. And, and they do it incrementally, and then they suddenly hit the jackpot at the end as such. Some people bring it all in as one process. And really, I think as a practice, you just need to discover what fits right for, for your practice in those circumstances. But we'll, we'll move on to that. So I'd like to c congratulate you all, actually, because we sat in this room a year ago or whatever it was when we launched this, and it was all a bit daunting. And I feel that people out in the community have showed enormous respect for the, for the program, but also you know, for the patients that, that are obviously very vulnerable in this scheme. So, uh, so well done to you all for that as well. And we're here to help you, and we really want to move it on.